Hey, so I'm going to talk to you guys about the often overlooked link between off-grid living and prepping. Um, so everyone, when they're on about prepping, always goes on about their bug out locations, how they're going to get there. That is always a big part of people's plan. Um, and then there's always the decision as well of do you bug out or do you stay at home? Um, so I kind of thought, why deal with that problem? I don't want to be like having an impending apocalypse where I'm rushing around to try and get a lift to somewhere in the woods. Why don't I just already be there? And then my friends can just turn up with the beers and we'll be totally sorted. Um, so out here, I am pretty much self-sufficient. I have got a tap that I use for drinking water at the moment, but I've started storing and filtering my own rainwater which I, to be honest, would be quite happy about using. It's just me being lazy and convenient. I've got a hose pipe, why not use it? Um, I've got solar panels to power my CB radio. Um, I've got a 36 foot aerial that my awesome friend Bloody Pirate set up for me. I don't really know what I'm doing with it, to be honest, but I can get in touch with people on that and communicate with that. I know enough about how to use it to actually work it, which is something that I didn't know before I went off grid. Um, and to be honest, phone out here is a bit patchy quite often, so having a bit of good communication to get in touch with friends at different camps is really, really useful. Um, saying all that, I do have a bug out location. Um, I mean, if there's a nuclear warhead or anything, then this place would be going and I'd be drinking whiskey. But anything short of that, if I had to leave here, then I've got other places that I've kind of prepared to go to. So I do have a bug out location. But I kind of feel like I'm already living in what most people would consider a bug out location. Um, so yeah, live like shit, hit the fan, and when it does you won't notice. If you're off the grid, you won't notice when the grid goes down. If there was a power outage in the nearest town, I genuinely would not notice because, I mean, when it's sunny I've got, I've got the solar, when it's like miserable and rainy then I can't binge watch Netflix but um, but yeah that's that's kind of like my power needs um, and for food and stuff I mean I've got woodland that I can forage, I've got veg growing here um, so not really reliant on supermarkets again I do kind of go and buy chocolate and kind of things like that but you know it is just as pure luxuries I have got everything that I need to survive right here um, and yeah, so just one step ahead of the rest of you, prepping and bushcraft and off-grid, there's a huge link between the three of them. Um, the bushcraft skills, I think, are the linking thing. That's what gets a lot of people who are into prepping into off-grid living. They'll go and try bushcrafting for a weekend and think how cool it is, and then think, why on earth can't I live like this all the time? Which is pretty much what I did, to be fair. Um, so yeah, um, I hope that's helped people kind of like figure out why I'm kind of called pixie prepper yet everything has just been kind of bushcraft and off-grid so far. Um, just one step ahead of the rest of you guys. Uh, take care, see ya!